to the question and answer video night. Um, you all know me, uh, Doug Price. I'm, uh, I've been uh, in the Northern Beaches uh, most of my adult life. In 1979, I, um, I had my hand up to go into council. Uh, I was a young liberal at the time. I married my wife, who was a young liberal, and we have two daughters that went into internships. Uh, with the North Northern Beaches Council, we have to go back to basics. 5.1% increased rates, paired back to 4.9% and excellent account allowed by me. CEO uh, is paid $540,000 with five other executives. Oh. Huge. Five other executives in that bracket or a bit less. We have a staff in Northern Beaches Council of 1,800 full-time equivalents, FTEs, of 1300. We will be the BHP of the Northern Beaches, uh, the biggest employer around. We certainly have got a big, uh, big number of staff. Our budget for 2024, and I'm glad everyone's uh, sitting down, 2024, 25, 5, million. And we have an annual, annual revenue, a revenue of 450 million. So there's a shortage of 100 million. This is all in the if you are on the latest council agenda of 25th of June 2024, which I have, you can go on to yep. the uh, internet and see it. So there is the balance. We need to be able to say, well, what the heck? Um, we're staring at possibly next year with the council passing possible rate increases up to 25%. They've taken $2 million out of the Mona Vale Cemetery Fund uh, to use that. So there's a, a very shortage of any money. Um, we, uh, we're in a real predicament, and uh, with that shortage in revenue, we need to be able to uh, do something. I'm going to certainly do something. I'm talking about a back to basics program, just not roads, rates, and rubbish. I'm talking about other basic things that we should be doing, other than other things which may be called wokey or pet projects. Um, we need to be able to go forward. Now, has anyone got any questions so far, or I'll just keep moving along, guys? Doug, so how, how will we how will we reduce the number of staff? Well, um, look, we've had natural attrition, and I think I'll, I'll explain more of that as I go along. We've got, as I said, we've got 1,800 um, staff, of which sorry, 1,300 full time, and 1,800, including those of full time equivalent FTEs, it's called in the county. So yep, um, FTL, yep. I've, I'm, I've got my ideas and suggestions on how to um, um, reduce them. Let me go on a little bit further and I'll come back to that question. I've got that written down. So I'll keep moving right. forward. Um, revenue, I said, is $450 million. Our budget is 550 So you see somewhere we're $100 million short. So as I said, it's going off the agenda of the 25th of June. Um, it's um, all very hard for anyone to get their head around when you think about these. We have we have motions going up at council uh, from page 111 on the agenda, which I've been, um, as many of you may know, I've been going to council for nearly um, one year, and I've built yep. up eight, eight, seven to eight YouTube videos, and I picked those up. What interests me is always has been the motions coming through from councillors. Uh, ones that haven't been passed now because the meeting ended 11.15 on the 26th will be discussed now. But when you look at these motions, it's very common to see that the motions are put together uh, and this talks about sending them off to the state member and the um, federal member and the, and the federal government. Of course, we don't have mm. any of those. We're the opposition. And I, I, see, I see this as um, wokey type things coming from the Greens and the Teals. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be looking to try and get rid of. Uh, they would have to go to um, these FTE staff uh, who would charge money here to write them off. I mean, why can't our councillors do it? Because I've done it um, eight times now. I've, I've researched things and I've come back with results and then take it back to council. You know, for example, uh, with the e-bikes, uh, such has been my success there. The mayor and deputy mayor went down to Manly and I've started a forum in the public education to solve that as well, which I have asked the mayor to come mm. along after school holiday. And the other one is the um, telephone poles with the charges on them. I, I 
got that going and it, it was on the news on the 17th and 5th uh 24 i got that going and i had yep. a, i had um i had um the um council surprise but i got that motion up because uh, i spent a lot of time contacting osprey contacting the people interviewing and talking to them, and they told me prior to went on the news i knew it was on the news that they were going to trial it in uh northern beaten so that's another tick for my box now i'm just a raw ordinary rate payer a private citizen but i spent a lot of time i dare say councillors could do that and that would be a way of reducing the number of staff that have to answer all these motions that uh, they like to get done so of course i had the other one of course with um mbn at coastal retreat um i went through uh, michael regan i went through um the um so if you scamp, and guess what? Doug Price solved it, because you know what? I just kept on going in. I got the uh, Senator Braggs to do some work for me, and I've got the MBN coming into Coastal Street um, in 2025. That's just an example of three, but there's the TAFE as well. Uh, the TAFE is interesting mm -hmm. because of the fact that uh, it's not been utilised, it's not been used all those years, 15 years ago. Uh, they took over control of the TAFE, nothing has happened. I've viewed. I've gone through the tape. I've had one of their um, one of their directors and um, our staff come down and talk about it, and I've also re referred it off to the Teachers Federation. There is definitely opportunities for us to get in there, and I don't want to quote a dollar figure, but it's a, a dollar figure well over a hundred thousand, or perhaps over two hundred thousand, utilising those brews. So there is a way of reducing reducing our um, uh, requirements in uh, staff as well. Uh, if we have a staffs and departments working, looking after the TAFE, and we've got them looking after other buildings that aren't being used. And of course, that leads me to the three council chambers, the Buco place, which is the old pit water one behind McDonald's. That's still in lease. That's still being used, uh, for, I believe, for uh, for telephone call centres. Then we have uh, Ringer chambers, and then we have the Manly Town Hall. I have a proposal, an idea. I've, I've walked through and had a look at them many years ago and had another look. Not a little look at them. I have an idea how we can utilise all three chambers and we can get some money back into the council. There's some of the ways just getting back without even perhaps getting back to basics. So there are a lot of things that I want to put on the agenda when I get elected. I do with the CEO Scott Phillips. Uh, I've got to say the councillors and all the councillors have not done a good job uh, in monitoring the money. I was quite blindsided at the last meeting on the 26th of June where we, we had this problem come out. I did send some stuff out from Channel 9. There was a video. I sent it out to all the Facebook pages, plus also another one that I sent out. So it was quite a blind side to think that rates could be going up 4.9 to 5.1, and we could be looking at a 25% increase next year. I don't want that, nor does anyone want that. So I'm going to um, try and resolve that problem when I'm elected as council and get things going. So does that sort of answer one of the questions, Jeff or Richard? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's... Yes, um, very good. Okay. I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the... I've got a question about the voting procedures, Doug. Do we... Uh, I can tell you. There's presumably... Yeah, yeah it, you know, do we just put one, two and three in the no. order and... Is the Liberal Party, using, Liberal Party is using what's called a pulse system. I am, there's going to be two ballots for Pitt Water Ward, and I happen to be the first ballot. I'm the first one on the ballot. All you need to do when the pulse comes through, you've got 15 minutes to vote for me. You put, you put your number one into that box. Then they will go to the next gentleman down uh, on the Pitt Water Ward, and you can vote for him. But if you vote for me, number one, and I get um, uh, yep. the highest number, what happens is I drop out of the uh, other ward at Narrabeen, where I have to have been the first on the draw again, so I am the first lead candidate in the ballot again on on the uh, that box. If I had a ghost that, I will get number one, and the next candidate you vote for. So I, I think that when you look at it, being the lead candidate uh, in that ballot is pretty good. So there's a, what they call a pulse system, and you've got to watch your phones, and you give them 15 minutes, uh, my name should come up. Uh, the first ballot will be uh, Price, Pickwater Award. And then they go on to Prince's Forest, where um, uh, Jonathan Lotter and uh, Greg is. And then we move on to Narrabeen. But if I get up in Narrabeen, uh, go ahead, Richard. 
sorry. I, I'm, I'm totally confused. I, you, you come, your name comes up first. Correct. Uh, how many are on the list? How many Only are two. going? Only two. Two of us. Only two on every ward. There's the first. Oh. So if I win... On pit water number one, the number two candidate does not get in. They're, they're electing just the winnable seats. Pit water is winnable on, uh, as a one, and so is Narrabeen as one. There's no one, two, three, four. There aren't that candidate. That's what would happen on election day, because I'll have some people possibly coming on to either of the wards and uh, just to have our numbers, just like the opposition. But how do they know that you've got the... Uh, enough numbers when... You put down one. Well, they don't know how many people are going to vote. Neither do I, and especially on state of origin, no, it might just be you two. But um, they will do me yeah, first, I, and then I they'll do it. the second. They'll do the second can candidate. They'll put his ballot up, and whoever gets the top number of uh, uh, votes is elected. Uh, oh, so right after after five minutes, is it your? Your number or your your face goes off, and whoever the second is comes, uh, comes up. I understand it's fifteen oh, minutes. It? I understand it's fifteen minutes, but technology is such. When you see my face face come up, you click, you click whatever they tell you to click uh, on the on the pulse at the call the pulse system, and and you put get me registered, and then you don't need to worry about the next one because you already voted. You don't need to worry about the second gentleman in pick water who's a gentleman by the name of Michael Gencher. You don't need to worry about it. If I get enough votes in pick water, I will drop out of the Narrabeen ward and I and the also the candidate in the Narrabeen ward will be elected. Is that a good explanation? No, because you still haven't told me how... They don't know how many people are going to vote. No, well, you that, drop that, out. well, that's right. That, the parties will be sending to everybody, um, everybody who is uh, uh, a delegate who is a voter will be get, getting sent a pulse, um, this pulse system number, and they will hold it open for, I believe, 15 minutes for you to vote. I'm, wondering, then, um, I'm, right. I'm wondering, Doug, whether you can uh, give, um, give uh, uh, is it Peter? Uh, no, oh, Richard, um, Richard, Richard uh, a, a direct call Richard, after, yeah. after this conference. I'll, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a direct call, Richard. Okay. I'll give you a direct right, call yeah. to you and Lynn. Okay. Be because someone wants to vote in Frenchers, uh, she wants to get voted number two. Yeah, that's um, that's correct. I'll explain it all to you over the phone. Otherwise, we could talk about a half an hour about it, mate. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. Yep. Well, let's move along. You still with us, Jeff? Yes. Yep. We've had a few. Okay. We've, we've had uh, we've had uh, Jersey Lee. We've had um, uh, uh, Macca. We've had uh, okay. an un unspecified person dial in. So yeah, we've got people are coming on board. Yeah. I can see Macca there. All right. Well, look. Um, I'll just keep moving on. Um, someone wants yep. a question. Just answer a question. <laughs> I don't know whether uh, Ian McDonald or head what I said, but let's go back briefly. We have a uh, we have an annual budget this 2024-2025. Uh, you'll be shocked. I'm glad everyone sits down because we have a budget of 550 million and we have an annual revenue of 450 million. That explains why we're in such dire straits uh, as we are, and why we have to go back to basics. So and I quite talked about motions that have been on the. Council papers, which I think favour the teals and the greens, and uh, referring stuff off to state members and federal members. We don't have we don't have uh, federal labour. We have federal labour. We don't have our our situation where we can do that. So that's the way that we should be looking to monitor that. That's another way of cutting back on staff. We have we have staff of 1,800. We're the bigger big BHP, biggest employer on the northern beaches, and we have full time staff of um, what they call FTE of 1,800 and actual full times of 1,300. So the council uses a lot of staff, calls them in, and that's exactly areas where we may be able to look at shaving down the numbers. 
So let's keep moving along. Um, uh, sorry? Still here? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, we need to return to basics, and I did mention about looking to review the three um, the sites, the, the Pitwater Old, Pitwater Buco Road, the Manly uh, Town Hall, and also the the um, the um, Ringa Chambers. We've got, to, we've got to get the staff down, and we've got to be able to do that. Now, a lot of the problems with the staff is that most of them uh, work full-time. I be, would be an exception running my own business, and running my own business, I decide what I want to do because I'm not having the boss tapping me on the shoulder, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to go overseas, you've got to go a trip and you miss the meetings for two weeks. This is quite common on the council. Councillors don't turn up and we see them zooming in on a Zoom meeting from somewhere else in the world. So the reality is um, they're not keeping abreast of what's going and they all appear to me just relying on the staff to run the, run the show. Hence when I was blindsided by the um, 25th of June meeting where discovered that uh, uh, the big budget deficit. No one told me. So anyway, um, that's a point we've got to keep going. We've got to get back to basics, back to basics items. We've got to promote that situation to have extra staff that may be called in to do work, not required anymore. Uh, any questions so far? No? No, great. Yeah, Doug, that, Doug we never see ranges around uh, Manly anymore or Seaforth. Well, that's very how, how many ranges? Well, how many ranges does the council employ? I understand they cut back the ranges. Um, I, I believe that the main main range of bases in Mona Vale, uh, in that Mona Vale area, which is another area which is a hangover from Pitwater days, and I don't believe there are ranges at uh, Manly anymore, and I don't believe there are ranges um, any further up. I think they've cut back on their ranges. I should get that question answered for you, Jeff. We don't see ranges um, yep. about about them. Correct. So um, I've spoken about um, getting the C4 Community uh, Centre leased. It's not been leased at all the time, that Manly Council. Correction, they've leased it off to small mums and dads who want a different day for this and that. But I believe we can get anything from one, 200,000 or more by having a lease and that lease would, could be done with the New South Wales tape. Uh, that would have um, free up staff. We could perhaps go and do something else, or they could perhaps think about doing something else as well outside council. So, any questions so far? No? All right. No. Go ahead. All right, I'll just keep talking. Um, no more people have joined yet, uh, moderator? Uh, we had uh, uh, Peter Polgus joined us. Um, I think that's the only one in the last five minutes. Okay, all right, people, people are people. There is a meeting on tonight at uh, McKellar down at uh, DY, and I've been invited to go down there and speak, so I will be going to that. That takes out a big chunk of people that uh, perhaps might have come on because I got referred on to go to the meeting because they couldn't come to my, um, my Zoom meeting. So uh, all good. So, so I you, need, you need the link for that meeting what, in about five minutes? So we've got five minutes left? Yeah, five to ten minutes, no more. So I'm just going to go quickly on the, the, the C4 picture perfects that I have put up, two of them. There's a double meaning on the picture perfects. Um, I know I was invited to ask to have roles in both of those, and it was interesting to be there and see uh, overseas companies uh, using um, C4, uh, sorry, using pit water, the basin, Gilgola Beach. It was a 70s, 80s movie, and it showed in my eyes what people have been telling me that that's the way pit water is. Well, it is still that way. Of course, we don't want the high rises from the men's government. And I was just telling Caleb in your branch a few moments ago, Macca and Holger, that up on uh, Spit Hill, there's been four houses sold all together in low, and they're going to be high rises going there overlooking the uh, Middle Harbour. So that's something that I'm very strong about. I don't want uh, high rises in Narrabeen and I don't want high rises in Pitwater and I will fight for that. So we've got to ask ourselves, we've got to be aware of what's going on and we can't take anything for granted. The council has sent off a, um, their proposal, which is pretty well much the same as it was. And there will be some, there will be some kickback from the, from the government. We know that um, Karingai Council uh, has taken the uh, government to court. They don't want it, and we know that 
Um, other councils are doing the same. We're not spending any money because I've been told by one of the senior executives we don't have the money. And I said, well, we have to be aware of what's, what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and change the pace. That's the reason for these films and why people approached me why I was asked to go into these films, because they knew that I would do a good job. And I'm very thankful that I saw it the way, the way they saw it, particularly those people who would like to save trees, especially around the Avalon area, and people who wanted to uh, ensure that the fit water would remain the same. We had 55 millimetres of rain the other day, and we had a lot of landslides and slippage. So there's a lot of reasons why I feel quite strong about the area. As I mentioned earlier, 1986 was when I bought and I built the house there in 1992. And I, I know that people have been over there that I know. So I'm, I'm asking now to, uh, we should endorse what I'm saying. We should be able to say, well, let's, let's move forward. Let's, um, let's get the council in order. And I'd like to see perhaps any more comments before we wrap it up. All right. Does e. McDonald, would you like to say something, Peter Polgar? No, nah, you know what my feeling is about the e-bikes. Yep. Yeah, well, Lynn got knocked over by a bicycle, didn't she? Yeah, it wasn't an e-bike. It was a push bike, but it did a lot of damage, mate. Yeah, I know. Well. And um, I've had the same problems here. When I was, I, I've been knocked over myself almost by a couple of e-bikes. The kids are just riding with um, um, a helmet they get with it. No bells. And this is the rise reason why I'm having a committee set up in the schools. And I've asked the uh, deputy mayor, sorry, the mayor and the deputy mayor will come, I'm sure, to discuss it within the schools. And we have to get a motion up, which goes through the PCs, which I'm fairly strong on. I've been involved with the PCs, um, uh, PNC Federation a long time. And also I'm into my 22nd year as a citizen member down at McKellar Girls. So that just shows my, my uh, strength in what I'm doing. And of course, all of you know, I've been with the HMAS Sydney Association since the beginning with my father. And also, of course, I've, I've also had um, areas of other influence, which I've I've, I've maintained my interest in the public schools. I've maintained my interest in um, uh, education. I've maintained my interest in the, in the council. So I want the e-bikes to be properly controlled. We may well have to go back to the government to do that, but I'm going to get some um, feedback from the, um, from the parents. And um, it's interesting, as I said earlier, that the, uh, that the mayor uh, went on TV and, sh and had um, bikes down at Manly also. So thank you, Pete. That's a good question. I think what you've got to do, just very quickly, when I was a young kid surfing at Bondi at 14, 15, we had to register our surfboards. We had a yellow sticker. Every surfboard had to be registered. If it wasn't registered, it was impounded. Now, these bikes, particularly e-bikes, need to be registered because someone needs to cop it in the neck if someone gets hurt or killed. And this way, at the moment, we have no control over these bikes. They come and go. And the worst thing is those damn bikes that are sitting all over, line bikes and that, they're, they're bloody useless. Yes. I mean, they're, they're all agree, bad. mate. I can give you more of a call on that. Um, let me just see if anybody else wants to talk before we, uh, we sign off for the evening. Um, Ian McDonald, Macca, are you still there? Oh, you're on mute, uh, uh, Ian McDonald. Ask them. Come on, Macca, turn off your phone, microphone. Turn it on. Yeah. Right, go. I'm clear. Sean, you can call me Macca too, mate. Um, uh, no price here. It was just good listening and, uh, and listening to some of the questions and stuff. And, you know, I wish you the best. Good. Thank you. All right. Well, that's good. And I've had Richard Smith and we've had others. Um, I'm going to go down to uh, Lee yeah. uh, at the Y. I've been invited along by the uh, FBC president uh, to meet these people because I had several of their membership uh, saying they couldn't come tonight. So they've invited me down. So... I will say if there's no more questions, yep. uh, we'll call the meeting to a halt yep. at 7.30 and uh, we'll be sending yep. this recording out to everybody. Again, thank you, every, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Good give luck, me a call Dougie. tomorrow Good morning, morning if you would, please. I'll give you a ring yes, tomorrow please. morning, Richard. No worries. Uh, early yes. in the morning, okay? Right, yeah. All right, okay. take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All the best. Right. Cheers for now. Bye. Bye. See you, Doug. Thank you.